Jane Gel, my husband's got his moves back. An alternative to pills, Voltaren is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory gel for powerful arthritis pain relief. Voltaren, the joy of movement. I brought in Ensure Max Protein with 30 grams of protein. Those who tried me felt more energy in just two weeks. Uh, Here, I'll take that. Ensure Max Protein with 30 grams of protein, one gram of sugar, and nutrients to support immune health. Join us tomorrow for our Sierra and Russell Wilson exclusive talking their new book and more babies. Do we need to try for one more? I like how you talking. Just Did you say the interview was, um, was <laughs> <laughs> They can have a it's hundred gonna babies. Happen. Of it's course so it gonna is. Happen. <laughs> we leave you now with another beautiful SAG Awards moment. Yes, Jessica Chastain's words of encouragement to those struggling to make their dreams come true. It's you know beautiful. What? You did all right. I'm tired. You did a Mama good job. Tired. Happening now. Police Chief William McManus left frustrated as one man's rushed to the hospital, shot in the torso and the head. What led to two men pulling guns on each other at this downtown bus stop? Is your home security system vulnerable to a break-in? Coming up, test results and which DIY systems are susceptible to hacking. And after a recent cold spell of weather, temperatures actually rise throughout this week. I'll be back to let you know how warm it's going to get in just a bit. News at 5 starts right now. Murdered in broad daylight. The question is, who did it? First at 5, San Antonio police investigating a woman's death. They say people near the 100 block of Inner Park reported hearing gunshots followed by the sound of a car taking off. It was around 1.15 this afternoon. Officers arrived to find a woman on the ground who had been shot. They say EMS tried life-saving measures, but she did die at the scene. Now they're turning to nearby businesses for surveillance to try and get some answers about what happened and who killed her. And it was not the first shooting of the day. Shots also rang out downtown late this morning following an argument at a bus stop. It happened in the 200 block of St. Mary Street, just south of the intersection with West Market. Garrett Berger talked with a visibly frustrated police chief, William McManus, about what happened. Somebody probably going to die because of an altercation. And somebody's real quick to pull out a gun to settle that. And that's what we have here today. Police Chief William McManus spoke with media members just a few yards away from where he says two men at a bus stop had argued and pulled out guns. First one, then the other. One walks away who initially pulled the gun and the other person started shooting at him. Fired five or six times. Hit in the head and upper torso. The man who was shot was rushed to the hospital in critical condition. Police took the shooter, who was still at the scene, into custody to talk with him. We're about to learn. Carpenter Michael Lucas was working in a building nearby. He thought the shots were from a nail gun at first, until other workers started getting excited. We were at that window, looked over, and we, I saw the man on the ground. The bus stop is the same one Barbara Quinones uses. The shooting there unsettling her. San Antonio is getting worse. It's getting bad. Uh, I was born and raised. I'm uh, 59 years old, and it's getting very, very ugly. I carry my uh, pepper spray because I mean it, it's scary. Lucas also wary, as he believes shootings are becoming more common. You know, you just gotta protect yourself and just be safe out there. You don't know what people are packing anymore. Now we reached out to San Antonio police to try to get an update on the status of the victim and whether or not the shooter was going to be charged or if this was going to be considered a case of self-defense. As of airtime, we have not yet heard back. Live at Public Safety Headquarters, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Garrett. San Antonio police are looking for a shooting suspect. They say a woman shot during a fight around 3 this morning in the middle of a northeast side neighborhood. Officers got a call for help after that victim was shot in the arm, then went to a home for help. They say she was fighting with another woman on Spring Valley. It's not far from Nacogdoches and Judson Roads. According to SAPD, the suspect took off in a red vehicle. The victim is expected to be OK. Now to the growing humanitarian crisis in Ukraine. More than half a million people fleeing Ukraine in the last several days as the ongoing war between the two countries continues. Neighboring countries opening their doors to refugees and the West sending millions of dollars in humanitarian aid. But there, that issue will likely only keep getting worse. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. A mass exodus from Ukraine causing Europe's largest refugee crisis in the shortest amount of time since World War II. We face what could easily become Europe's, Europe's worst humanitarian and refugee crisis in decades. 
with the numbers of refugees and internally displaced multiplying by the minutes. As fighting intensifies, more and more people fleeing the country. There's some shout, people, people shout, and everyone run to buy some food, and uh, we hear some boom everywhere, and after that we directly pack our uh, bag and clothes and some documents, and we run. Thousands packed into this tunnel beneath the Lviv railway station in western Ukraine. Authorities letting families up to the platform one at a time, where a train awaits to take them to Poland. More than half a million leaving Ukraine in search of safety. This woman getting emotional, speaking about leaving her husband behind, who's now helping defend Ukraine. Her son asking, is daddy going to die? And back in Ukraine, the anguish of war. These doctors in Mariupol desperately trying to save a young girl injured by Russian shelling. She didn't make it. The U.S. is sending millions of dollars in humanitarian aid, but we're also seeing extraordinary acts of kindness from neighboring countries. Volunteers in Poland meeting a bus of refugees, offering them free rides to safety, including places as far as Amsterdam and Sweden. Rina Roy, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, the elections office is bustling today, getting ready for tomorrow's joint primary elections. Early voting numbers have been released. This year we saw about 97,000 early votes. That's around 24,000 less than 2020. Elections Administrator Jackie Kalanen says the cold and drizzly weather last week could have been a factor. She says tomorrow's nice forecast could mean a bigger turnout, and she says her staff is ready. That staff includes some new faces because of COVID. Most of our election officials are, are elderly, retired people, and so they're a lot more cautious and uh, they're sitting on some of these elections waiting for it to get better. Everyone working tomorrow has been thoroughly trained and Kalanen says they're ready to go. At polling locations tomorrow, masks are not mandatory but preferred. There will also be gloves and hand sanitizer available. Now, if you didn't get a chance to vote early tomorrow, your final opportunity to get out and vote tomorrow is Election Day. There are some important races on the ballot, including for governor and Bear County judge. Polling locations are open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. tomorrow. We have all of this information and more on KSAT.com. And of course, stick with us for all of your Election Day coverage tomorrow. Also happening tomorrow, the 2022 homeless point in time count. Normally it's in January. This year it was postponed. Tomorrow, hundreds of volunteers with the South Alamo Regional Alliance for the Homeless, or SARA, will be conducting surveys on the number of unsheltered people in Bear County. The information helps determine who's most impacted by homelessness in the community so agencies can determine what's needed and apply for federal funds. Last year's point in time count was canceled because of the pandemic. Instead, Sarah used an online database for the count. This year, volunteers will have N95 masks and hand sanitizers on their hands. Haven for Hope will transport people to their shelter if needed. The data collected from tomorrow's count will be released at the end of May. Let's check in now on local COVID-19 numbers. Metro Health reporting 257 new cases and 11 more deaths. The seven-day average stands at 251. In terms of our hospitals, there are 318 COVID patients hospitalized, 74 are in the ICU, and 41 are on ventilators. Coronavirus concerns still dwindling across much of the country and more states are lifting mask mandates for schools. It comes after updated guidance from the CDC, but the debate continues about whether or not it's the right option. ABC's Morgan Norwood reports. A growing number of states are now easing off of the mask mandates. It comes after the CDC updated its guidance, saying more than 70% of the population is living in communities with low to moderate risk, and they can ditch their mask indoors, including inside schools. The CDC chart showing the latest metrics for COVID-19 community levels and now focuses on COVID hospitalizations and adequate hospital space. New York Governor Kathy Hochul announcing the statewide masking requirement for schools will end Wednesday. Given the, the, the decline in our rates, our hospitalization, strong vaccination rates and the CDC guidance. Uh, my friends, the day has come. California, Oregon and Washington following close behind, moving from mask requirements to mask recommendations in schools. Delaware doing away with its mask rules four weeks earlier than originally planned. 
And despite the shift in policies, the mass debate still continues, with some parents calling it premature. My kids are higher risk because of some medical conditions, so um, we've been extra cautious. In Illinois, demonstrators pushing back, highlighting the ongoing health risk as Chicago lifts its mask mandate. But public health experts emphasize the U.S. is moving in the right direction. This is the way we need to go. I think this is taking us forward with a new direction going into the pandemic, but we're still focusing on safety. We're still focusing on preventing death and illness. And tomorrow night, President Joe Biden will give his State of the Union address before mostly maskless crowd in the House chamber. A White House official confirming to ABC News that masks will no longer be required for fully vaccinated individuals on the White House campus beginning Tuesday. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. Check traffic out there and you can see right now we are at 281 and Hildebrand. It is the southbound lanes of 281 really backed up. This is not all that unusual for this time of night as 281 winds towards downtown, but very slow going. Northbound lanes are great. Southbound lanes, not so much. I actually know earlier this afternoon there was some debris on the road near Grayson Street at 281 in the southbound, so that still may be a residual effect or maybe it's not all cleaned up. Anyway, weather-wise, earlier this morning, a little below freezing at 31 degrees. Then we topped out at 68 with a lot of sunshine. So well below average this morning, the average low 48 and then near average this afternoon. 72 in Del Rio, West Kerrville 67. Santa Maria 68, Floresville 69. You get the idea. Temperatures for the most part in the 60s to right near 70 degrees. And it's comfortable out there right now, but if you have evening plans, have a jacket. Temperatures falling quickly by 8 o'clock, mid 50s, 10 o'clock, near 50s. We'll talk about our warming trend and if there's any chance of rain coming up. Thank you, Adam. Do you own a home security system? Well, there's something called jamming that hackers are using to trick your system and get into your home. We'll explain which systems are susceptible and how you can ward off hackers in just a bit. Plus, they're an alternative to credit cards and the deal sounds sweet. We're talking about buy now, pay later options. Who's using them most and what experts want you to know before you agree. And before we go to break, here's a look at what we're working on for the news at six. As the war in Ukraine continues and those sanctions live on, we're talking about Russia and its ties to some Latin American countries. Our Jesse DeGoriato speaks with a professor at St. Mary's University about how sanctions could affect countries that are already unstable. Plus, he shot and killed a man in 2020 and shot at police officers while getting away. Today, Greg Anthony Delgado warned his fate in a Bear County courtroom. Alicia Barrera walks us through that crime and the case that's landed him years in prison. All that and more tonight at six. We'll be right back at five. Buy now, pay later. It's an online payment option 45 million people used last year alone. It's when retailers allow you to pay a portion of a product, receive it right away, and take care of the balance in payments later. It's an alternative to credit cards. Many younger consumers are using it, but it comes with some risks. It's much more affordable to pay 250 every two weeks than putting up 1000 right up front. If you can't afford to pay for something in full right now, can you really afford to pay for it in the next month or two? Experts say the biggest downfall is getting behind on payment schedules for multiple items and then getting charged high late fees and interest, not to mention damaging your credit. They say you can avoid this by keeping a record of your due dates and making sure you have enough cash on hand to meet those obligations. New at five, millions of us rely on home security systems for protection. But what if those systems aren't so secure when it comes to hackers? 12 your size, Marilyn Moore shows us what the bad guys already know, that some systems can be disabled in just seconds. This isn't a real burglar. He's a Consumer Reports tester disabling a home security system. In seconds, he jams the signals to the security sensor and gets inside the house. Jamming is when a burglar or hacker blocks the wireless signal of a door sensor, window sensor, or motion sensor in a security system. That allows them to access your home without actually triggering the alarm. In its latest test, Consumer Reports found five home security systems susceptible to these types of attacks. Abode IOTA, Cove Home Security, Eufy 5-Piece Home Alarm Kit, Ring Alarm, and Simply Safe the Essentials. 
Abode and Simply Safe can detect jamming and will alert the homeowner that it's happening, but the alarms won't trigger. The other systems offer no alerts. Consumer Reports shared its findings with the companies. Eufy was the only one that explicitly said it will fix the jamming issue in a future update. Cove said it plans to add jam detection next year, but likely as an optional feature. The good news is that jamming attacks are very rare and security systems and other low-tech security solutions will often deter burglars. If you own one of these systems, CR says you don't need to rush to replace it. Both the Ring and Simply Safe systems perform well in other tests, including motion detection. One that was not susceptible to jamming, the Kangaroo Front Door Security Kit. No matter what system you use, safety experts say don't put the brand name on a sign in your yard or a sticker on your door or window because that information may just help the hacker. Instead, use generic signs and decals. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Taking a look at live cam, you're over the AT&T Center where the rodeo is over, so there's a lot of cleanup going on. Right yeah, that, that's the carnival right there. You see them getting all the uh, rides. Oh. Torn down, the rodeo over for another year. The Spurs, I believe, are back in the AT&T Center on Thursday. That transition happens so fast. Yeah, it does. Yeah, <laughs> But of course, the weather gets nice as the rodeo winds course, down. It's kind of how it works. We had some warmth during That's the rodeo. True. That's Monday true. and Tuesday of last week. and. <laughs> Adam's That's, about it. <laughs> That's about it. That's about it. So let's talk about what's coming our way. We're going to have another cool night tonight, but a warm afternoon tomorrow. And actually, afternoon temperatures will be on the rise. We're just days away from being about 80 degrees again. But then that's also going to lead to some foggy and damp mornings with an influx of humidity. I want to touch on this quickly. Our average last freeze across our area. It's February, February 24th here in San Antonio. Obviously, we're past that. However, you know, last week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we, of course, had a freeze in the mornings, and it can still happen. This doesn't mean it's not going to happen after February 24th, but it can still happen and often does a little bit as we get into early March. The latest freeze we've had was April 3rd. Okay, so it can happen as late as early April, that first week of April. You look at temperatures right now. 70 Alpine, 65 Dallas, 65 in Amarillo, 72 Laredo. No big changes across the state. No big cold front marching southward or anything really of note that's going to be moving in. I mean, Hondo 69 and New Braunfels now at 68 degrees. Here in San Antonio, we're at 66. But keep in mind, as the sun sets, temperatures falling off quickly. If you have outdoor activities or any sporting events, have a jacket ready to go because temperatures will get cool quickly. Tomorrow morning, about 31 in Uvalde, 32 in Kerrville and Fredericksburg. We're thinking about 37 in San Antonio. However, I do think in some outline areas, we could get pretty close to freezing tomorrow morning. Then by tomorrow afternoon, we're back to 70 degrees. 71 here in town, 75 Catula, Del Rio, a high of 75, Elmendorf about 73, and Bernie at 69. But then look what happens. 70s as we get into Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, then 80 degrees by Saturday. So there is a bit of a warming trend as we go through the week here. And we had a lot of sunshine today. It felt good out there. And after the cloudy, cool conditions and somewhat damp conditions we had for a long stretch last weekend to start the weekend, the sunshine feels good and we earned it. Some clouds are off to the north of us in North Texas and New Mexico. I think those will really stay out of our area and we'll just have a clear night tonight. That's one reason why temperatures will fall off quickly. Clear sky, calm wind, and dry air, dry air for now. We do have this surface high pressure system that's over East Texas. And of course, you always have that clockwise circulation around a high pressure system. Now, as that slides eastward, that's going to put us more into that southerly wind and increase our dew points and humidity levels. So still very dry air outside today. Dew points down in the teens. Hondo at 17. Kennedy dew point of 15, 19 here in San Antonio. But look what happens toward the end of the week. Friday, Saturday, dew points well into the 50s, and even by Sunday, we're looking at dew points in the lower 60s. So once we get that little extra moisture, I do anticipate the return of foggy, drizzly mornings by Thursday, then especially Friday, Saturday, 
and Sunday. As for tomorrow, just wall to wall sunshine right away. Clear skies tonight, clear to start the day tomorrow. 37 in the morning, 71 for the high temperature. Not much of a breeze the next couple of days until we see that southerly wind kick in more later this week. By Thursday, we're talking morning fog drizzle and just that overall dampness up until roughly the noon hour Thursday all the way through the upcoming weekend. But with that little bit of afternoon sunshine, high temperatures well into the 70s, even 80 degrees and notice those mornings will get significantly warmer as well. As for rain chances right now, it's not looking promising about a 20% chance Sunday, Monday. Yeah, not what we need, but at least those temperatures are back up. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I haven't voted yet, so I'll vote tomorrow. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I, nice saved, I saved it for the good yeah, weather. There you Hopefully go. that's a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. you know, you, traditionally when the Spurs go on the rodeo road trip, they talk about how it's a bonding opportunity. Yep. You get the feeling they're bonding on this trip? Yeah, I really do because they're doing a lot better than I thought they would. And especially after all the changes that came at the trade deadline. When we come back, they wrap up the rodeo road trip. Again, very difficult team tonight. They're in Memphis. We'll get it set up for you when we come back. And the Cowboys owner Jerry Jones addressing that settlement he gave to the cheerleaders when we come back. San Antonio Spurs wrap up their rodeo road trip tonight when they face the Grizzlies for the third time this season. The Spurs have yet to beat the Grizz this season with two losses so far for the team that was moved up to number three in the Western Conference, winning seven of their last ten games. Despite all the changes at the trade deadline, the Spurs have done better than most people thought, going four and three on the rodeo road trip with a chance to finish five and three tonight. The Spurs are currently at 12 in the West, just one game behind the New Orleans Pelicans for the number 10 play-in spot. Head coach Greg Popovich can also tie down, or should say tie Don Nelson as the winningest coach in NBA history with a victory tonight as well. Being in this position is uh, awkward, uh, surreal, uh, unexpected, never planned, and all of the above. It's the best way to describe it. All right, matchup is tonight at 7. Highlights for you tonight on the Night Beat. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. For the first time since the near two and a half million dollar settlement was revealed for four Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders, team owner Jerry Jones is talking. This is the first time Jones has spoken about the incident in 2015 that involved Cowboys Executive Vice President for Communications and Public Relations, Rich Dalrymple, who abruptly retired early this month. Dalrymple was accused of entering a room where four cheerleaders were changing during the Cowboys kickoff lunch in that year, and one of the cheerleaders identified Dalrymple as holding his cell phone pointed in their direction direction, standing behind a barrier. Earlier that year, Dalrymple was accused by a fan watching a live stream in the Cowboys draft day war room of taking upskirt photos of Charlotte Jones Anderson, the daughter of the Cowboys owner Jerry Jones, which he denied. Here's what Jones told Dallas television station KXAS. In part, we took these allegations very seriously. We immediately began to look see an investigation into the situation. I can assure you that we found that it need be there would have been firings or there would have been suspensions. As it turns out, in the best interest of our cheerleaders, the best interest of the organization and the best interest of our fans. What we decided to do was show the cheerleaders how seriously we took these allegations. We wanted them to know that we were serious, and so the settlement was the way to go. Those are his first comments since this broke, but this is a story I don't think is finished right now. We'll check in a little bit later on on this. Because Dalrymple was allowed to retire instead of being fired. Exactly. All right. Thank you, Greg. We'll be right back. If you're outdoors tonight, have a jacket ready to go once that sun sets cooling quickly and eventually we'll be down in the 30s by tomorrow morning. Elmendorf, Lavernia about 33, Helotus, Stone Oak about 36, and then by the afternoon, sunny and beautiful, right up around 70 degrees again. And we'll do that again in terms of the afternoons in the 70s all week, but the mornings will gradually get warmer. And I think by Saturday, we're talking 80 degrees for high. Just some morning dampness with the fog and drizzle Thursday into the weekend. A welcome change. Thank you so much, Adam, and thank you for watching the News at 5. World News Up next. We'll see you back here at 6.